Okay, so what we're going to do today, right now, is I'm going to do a scan on both knees after a 30-minute ice skate run. Well, it's not competitive speed, but it's definitely greater load than what we've seen during a 10-15 minute warm-up. Okay, so we're going to have a full appreciation, real-time, on what's happening in a high-performance athlete's knee in speed skating. There we go, we found the patella, the apex, and we can see the quadriceps tendon glide very nicely over. And after 30 minutes, what I can fully appreciate, especially in Daniel's knee, um, given his um, duration of the sport over time, several years, there is no massive uh, pathological events occurring after the load, all right, which is good for Daniel to also know. Uh, because at times as a coach and trainer, there are requirements for them to go onto the ice with their athletes. Am I right? Okay, so this is fine. Again, I'm going to go side to side, scanning the medial aspect. Yeah, no overt signs of pathological changes. Physiological changes are there. I'm going to go laterally. Again, nothing of concern. From here, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to scan the superficial space of the patella itself to identify if there's any possibility. And I'm using the floating technique. No contact. And there we go. Nicely appreciated. The gel space, which is superficial. The hyperechoic structures of the patella and there's no sign of pathological bursitis occurring after half an hour load on ice all right and as we're going down now we come to the patella tendon again nice fibula pattern good hofas pet fat signaling we go further down distal and there we come to the insertion end where we see some form of concerns, changes of concern, but these are more, uh, they are present because of previous injuries. Nothing which is actually related to today's activity. Okay? And again, something like this where I can interact with my athlete, all right, while I'm scanning, where he can also appreciate what's occurred and what's occurring gives us a different level of clinical care uh, in our clinical setting. If his trainer was here, if his teammates were here, we can explain to them, okay, this is Daniel's condition right now and what you can expect from him, what not to expect from him, what not to force him to do and for him as well to know how to train. So this is invaluable when it comes to clinical practice. Okay, again, I'm just going to finish the fact that I'm going to scan the entire width. Again, we're coming from the rectus femoris, we're coming on to the quadriceps tendon. Again, nice continuity. We go laterally, medially, and I'm going to go over. I'm going to do the floating. Light hypoechoic region, but nothing to really be concerned about. We're gonna go down distally. There we have the patella tendon, the pet pad, and as we keep going down, nice sensations in two tibial tuberosity again, some adaptive changes from previous injuries. So these are not current. Signs of pathological changes, but these are adaptive changes. It's something which is quite important to note. Not everything that is looking abnormal is a point that should be of concern immediately, but it's just to be noted and to be addressed or to be noted as adaptive changes from previous occurrences. Okay, so don't let alarm bells unnecessarily go off. But at the same time, do not ignore these things. Keep monitoring them over time. So 
what we've done here is straight out of the ice, our athlete has come out into the room in the arena itself, all right, and we are able to do a real-time scan, okay, which gives a clinician the advantage of providing good sports clear imaging in healthcare.